ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Tatiana Torres of Tenton's Global Advisors and our esteemed panel. Buenos dias, good morning. It's still morning, right, I think. Good, good, just checking. Making sure we're all awake here. Well, I'm Tatiana Torres, or Tatiana Torres, depending how you hear me this morning. Uh, honored to be here as a board member of Concordia, but also with these amazing gentlemen, and to be able to talk to you about something that's close to my heart, which is communication, um, but digital innovation in Las Americas. Uh, I am joined today by Anthony Cassiano, an ambassador, um, Ramon Eduardo Martinez de la Guardia, and we're gonna have a conversation as to what's happening in Latin America, what are the opportunities there? The World Economic Forum, obviously, I think we all know this and it's clear to everyone. COVID-19 did have an impact on a lot of the communication and exasperated and elevated and focused us on the deep digital divide that is in the US, but also in Las Americas. The Inter-American Development Bank issued a report in 2020 that highlighted that three out of 10 Latin Americans are without digital access and internet. That is a staggering fact if you think about it because technology ushers growth and education and the opportunity for entrepreneurs and citizens to have access to what we all need, which is the opportunity to be connected. Today, I wanna to talk to Anthony and the ambassador a little bit about that. And we wanna hear from them and your opinion and thoughts as to what we're doing to improve and, and, and get the benefits from that great strides that we're making right now in Latin America. Anthony, I'm gonna ask you first the first question, if that's okay. So we know that Latin America has made great strides, but what are some of the improvements that have, you've seen over the past three years since COVID um, that have been made to improve the lives of those citizens and entrepreneurs and give them access to technology through, through Siemens? Yeah, thank you for the question, and it's a pleasure to be part of the panel. Um, you know, Siemens has been in Latin America, different countries for over 100 years, but I've, I don't think I've seen uh, a greater enthusiasm or energy for the importance of the region um, to Siemens as I have coming through COVID. And uh, in, in fact, from a financial services side, we opened up a, a, an entity to lend directly into Latin America out of Mexico City, but to support the region. And we do that because we think the investment is both necessary and the opportunity um, is great. And it's, it's digitalization, it's opening up. If you look at the different market forces, whether it's supply chain nearshoring, whether, um, uh, whether it's innovation, whether it's um, you know, connecting markets through digitalization, we think there's a great opportunity. We think there's a great opportunity there. So you know, we're seeing um, factories being built Right? And, and you look at a factory being built and it's not gonna look like a factory from 10 or 20 years ago, it's gonna look like a factory of the future with modern technology, with automation, with innovation, with, with sustainability, green, reducing greenhouse gas, which is a, a major issue in some of, the, uh, some of the countries in Latin America. So when I look at it, um, and I spend a lot of time there, I, I go there once a month to different countries and we're working with hospitals and we're working with factories and we're working with large companies, but we're also working with the supply chain, which is small and medium sized companies. So bringing, um, you know, making it a fulsome type of, of experience that's necessary to be, uh, to be successful and equally important, uh, the role of the private side will help drive innovation there but participation with government, mm -hmm. right? And we've seen in other parts of the world, uh, uh, public-private partnerships, that becomes important as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. Right, so the, the public-private partnerships mm -hmm. are important. And in order to do that collaboration, we, we have to talk, like you just mentioned, about the workforce, right, and what yeah. that means. And I think that due to COVID, it's not a surprise to any of us, the workforce has been impacted around the world. <coughs> That's one of the challenges that we're mm -hmm. facing, job creation, right? Yes. So we talked up about opportunities in digital innovation and what is being done. What are some of the challenges that you see uh, from that public-private lens um, that you're managing through? Well, f first of all, thank you for, for the invitation. And this is a great topic to, to, to be a part of. Um, 
basically our government, uh, one of the goals is to reduce poverty and inequality and, and by doing that, we need to get the people uh, connected, give them the tools that they need to, to succeed. Uh, what Anthony was saying about public-private partnership is absolutely critical. Uh, we need to understand, and this is crucial, that the individual, the citizen, should be the priority in the changes that the digital innovation brings. So I think it has to be addressed in, in three perspectives, people, technology, and process. People, you need to have, you need to provide all of them with the same tools so that they can participate in digital innovation. In technology, we need to continue to invest in infrastructure to connect the unconnected, and to, to, to be able to have internet in rural communities that are uh, difficult in, to access, and processes. Uh, if you think about it, um, you have the tools, but you need to provide or educate also the people on how to use it. First, if you get uh, access to internet, then you need to know how to use it and what are the, the tools that, are, that will help you um, take advantage of digital innovation and not be uh, displaced by them. Um, so important, the, the public and, and, and private uh, achie achievement in this because ed education not only comes from the government, but also uh, from the private side. And we also need to adapt our regulations. We need to simplify our processes. We need to uh, make sure that people can now access cross-border transactions. We, we should create also domestic markets. And, and we should update our, our legal frameworks in order to adapt them to the new technologies. This is of great importance and, and we have seen that uh, countries are, are having a tough time adapting uh, um, to the fast uh, growing of uh, digital innovation. Right. So, uh, Anthony, do you want to say yeah, something? Yeah, maybe just a, a comment there because I think we're in a beautiful building here and we sometimes take, a, uh, take for granted what we have in the U.S., but you talk about basic needs, right. basic infrastructure, um, access to education, roads and, and bridges and airports and, and, and metro, um, uh, the web, right? Just things that we take for granted that, that still needs to be built, or that infrastructure needs to be built to create the access, uh, to create the access to kind of level that playing field. Recently, uh, the federal, uh, the head of the, uh, the Federal Reserve, um, Jerome Powell talked about in the U.S., there's a shortage of, uh, there's, a, there's five million jobs that are open that can't be filled, right? That's structural, that's not transitory, it's structural issues. And so how do you fill it? The only way you, the only way you create that capacity is through, um, through technology, right, and through automation, but also opening the markets, and opening the markets to our closest regions, and to do that, there needs to be the same types of infrastructure that we have here. And the digital innovation, also, since we are in a university, right, it's important to talk about how we educate, That's not just the workforce, but the students that are coming, those that are tiny, to the ones that are sitting here getting master's degrees, not just at this university, but across the board. So education is, is a key part of this conversation. The workforce is as well, but you can't have an educated workforce without the education first, right? That's right. So when we, we talk about education, we talk about those that we're preparing. You said we're in a beautiful building today. Most of us have iPhones, Androids whatever the phone is that we have in our hand, we have access to that. We have some of the challenges, but how do we close that gap in Latin America? How, what, what can we do? What are some of the ways that we can go and say, okay, this is what we need to do? And obviously, equity is important in making sure that people are able to have access to that that are not in certain sectors of a city, but the whole city, the whole state, the whole country. Thoughts on closing that gap? You know, I was, I was on a panel just last week talking about um, diversity and access, access to capital inside the supply chain, access to capital for small and medium-sized companies. And you look at it and um, there's no large, good-performing company that can't access, uh, you know, capital. 
Um, there's no uh, there's no high net worth individual that can't uh, that can't access capital through their banks. But the the reality is, small and medium companies um, make up 90 plus percent of all companies. Right, the biggest employers when you look at it. In uh, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. And, and so when you talk. Um, when you talk to, 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 to owners of those businesses, it is access. It's access to be able to innovate. It's access to be able to scale. It's access to be able uh, to level the, you know, the level the playing field. And, um, and so I think that's where it's really fertile ground for us to invest in. And I don't mean just um, uh, all supply, diversity, uh, diversity matters. Siemens has 16,000 suppliers in the U.S. 16,000. Um, 16,000, okay. yeah. And, and uh, they made a real push to bring um, diversity to the supply chain. And you look at things like unconscious bias, you look at things like access, you look at things like um, helping some of these companies just develop a business plan, respond to RFPs. There's an education process to that. And so on that panel, we talked about this ecosystem that needs to come from government, that needs to come from large corporates to help smaller businesses. Um, that needs lenders to help and take risk and invest in that space, and, and I do think that becomes really, I do think that becomes really important, because the large company can't operate with the small company mm -hmm. without the small company, right? And and you look at um, RFPs now. Think about sustainability. There's not an RFP that Siemens doesn't put out, or that other large companies doesn't put out that doesn't just ask for a widget. Can you make what I need? But they also ask, what's your carbon footprint? Now, how does a small print, you know, first you need to understand what that means, then you need to know how to measure it, then you need to know how to decarbonize, but those are, are, are things, and that's technology, right? Sustainability. That, that, yeah, sustainability, that, that sort of matches digitalization because you need that um, technology to help to decarbonize. And, and so helping them through that journey, I think, is the opportunity and actually a necessity. That's very true. Ambassador, any thoughts around that? Well, I agree 100% with the financial uh, aspect of it. Um, I, I'm going to give you a, an example of what Panama did during the pandemic. We, of course, we had a, a big lockdown, and um, many people were suspended in their in their in their uh, work contract, so they were not receiving any income. So, basically, Panama had to provide monetary transfers uh, to people, and and the most vulnerable of them. Uh, did not even have a bank account. Mm. Okay, so we're talking more than 1.4 million Panamanians did not have a bank account, and by an innovation that transformed, we did like a, a digital voucher, and what we did is w the ID card, the personal identification card, we call it the cedula, um, we did an innovation so that that was used as a debit card. and. Uh, so they received the, the funds, and also we incorporated a lot of small business. Like you were saying, there, there's a, a hundreds of businesses that did not have financial services. Like the, you can't use credit cards to pay, uh, only cash. Right. But this, so more than 400 uh, um, of these uh, small uh, enterprises, we're talking about grocery stores, and, and, and little little businesses. They were also involved in this financial inclusion. Um, and now, I think uh, everyone has understood that because of the pandemic, because of the emergency, we were able to advance so much in innovation, but we can't stop now. Um, the other thing, like I, I mentioned before, a lot of rural communities are does not have the access, and, and we need the, the technology like Panama has uh, done a, a sign a, an agreement with Starlink of uh, SpaceX, and by satellite they can connect uh, areas that are not don't even have roads to get in. So in order for for these communities to have financial inclusion, to have education, they need first to uh, have internet, and we have to stop if we're not doing if we have not done that. Internet is not a, a luxury, it's a right, and people should be connected to the internet, to the digital uh, tools, 
and, and, and improve the quality of life. At the end of the day, we need all resources necessary to, to make that. That's, that's uh, the war that we have not won yet. That's right. So we're in Women's Month, right? Yesterday we celebrated. And I'm a female up here, so I have to speak on behalf of my ladies. Um, it's necessary for me to do that. <laughs> um, you see women um, struggle most through the pandemic. There is statistic after statistic that show that with COVID, we are 136 years back in where Pearl we were. That's very difficult to comprehend and take in. How is innovation, digital innovation, helping women from where you sit? Mm -hmm. How are women entrepreneurs mm -hmm. moving forward? Those that you mentioned that I've seen myself present in Latin America. How are we helping women move forward throughout these conversations of digital innovation? I'm gonna give that to you okay. first. So again, we need the technology and the digital innovation to put it in, 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 in place and in practice for, for the most vulnerable and uh, we need to give opportunity, equal opportunities to women. And, and for example, in Panama, we did a, a number of, uh, of projects that involved uh, helping with financing, uh, marketing, um, the, the, the complete structure of how to operate a business for uh, women that own uh, small companies. And at the end of the, of, the, of the process, they were able to um, sell their goods in the local market and some of them even got cross-border to export goods. So that's one thing important to give them the opportunity to run their own companies, but by having all the resources uh, available uh, for women to succeed. That, that's just one example, we, but we need to continue to think outside of the box and, and give them more opportunities. Because if we can run our own homes, we can definitely run the companies. You bet, for yes. Sure, absolutely. Yep. Anthony? Look, I, I'd like to be able to say it's access to education and we can invest in that, but I think it's access to opportunity. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, if, um, if your company, if leaders don't reflect society, women make up 50% right, of, of the population, if it, if it doesn't look like that, then you're probably missing an opportunity. Um, and, and, and so to me, um, you have to tackle, and, and I know this because we're looking at it, things like unconscious bias. You tend to look and attract people that kind of look like you, right? So. Uh, so we, we work to take that out of the equation, look at skills, but also to create opportunity and, 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 and allow people to take risks and allow people to fail and there's, uh, um, uh, in order to succeed. And, and so I always say throwing, you know, throwing them into the deep end, and that's not, that's not women, it's anyone who, I've, who, who you deem to be talented. Give them the opportunity, whatever color they are, whatever gender they are. Um, but it should look like it should mirror what society is. The leader, the head of Siemens US is a woman, the mo one of the most dynamic people I've ever met and has been transformative for Siemens. And I would just say it's about opportunity, uh, opportunity uh, in these type of roles. So. I, 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 I need to also uh, comment on what the government of Panama has done in, in the sense of giving uh, women opportunities that for the first time in history, the majority of the Supreme Court of Panama, it's women, six out of nine uh, Supreme Court justices. Fantastic. And the president of the Supreme Court is currently a woman. So um, that's just to say that, you know, we're, we're getting into a point that this cannot uh, longer uh, be an issue. Right. Well, Anthony, Ambassador, thank you so much for taking thank your time you. to speak with us. Anything, any parting thoughts before we exit the stage to hear more amazing folks today? Anything else to say? Well, we need to open our minds. We need to think outside the box. We, uh, governments have a responsibility to, um, to adapt and update the re regulations. Uh, we, need, we need to raise uh, important questions. How, how are communications company going to, to deal with, uh, with innovation? How are banks going to, to evolve with the new uh, disrupt, disruptive uh, um, technology? I mean, but at the end of the day, all has to happen to give uh, uh, opportunities to people. That's a key word. Yeah, so I know we have just a little bit of time. I, I would say this, 
in my career, this has been, right now is the most exciting time, um, uh, it's the most exciting time of my career. Between reshoring, nearshoring, between digitalization, between sustainability, these are all market forces that can create opportunity if we reach for it. And I think Latin America has to be part of that. Absolutely. Um, otherwise, candidly, it gets left behind. So that's right. Let's seize the moment. Absolutely. On that, thank you so much for the opportunity to listen to us. Continue to enjoy your time here at Concordia. Thank you.